Okay, so last time we were looking at the fields and let's finish what we started for the, the ground state in the interacting theory. Okay, so we had I've done roughly the following. So if you look at the ground state of the free part of the Hamiltonian, okay, we had expressed as There's some lag, I don't know why. Like this, okay. Okay. And then we had acted upon on both the sides with this operator. Okay, and this gave us the following because all these states were killed when we took lambda going to infinity limit, keeping epsilon fixed. Okay, because they were exp exponentially suppressed. So this is how we isolated. Now what I will do is I will shift lambda. So this this uh, this piece is lambda one minus epsilon i epsilon. Now, lambda is going to infinity, so even if I add or subtract a finite piece from it, it does not matter. So, I can make the replacement um, and replace it by T naught plus lambda 1 minus i epsilon. Okay, because I am taking lambda to be infinity, okay, so adding a finite piece does not matter. Okay, so, if I do so, then you can see that I can express cat omega here as the following. This algebra you can check. It will be e to the i e omega t naught plus lambda 1 minus i epsilon. Okay. Times e to the minus i h t naught plus lambda 1 minus i epsilon. Okay. And if you do not like what I am saying here that I can shift by t naught and if you think this is not nice, you can start with uh, a change expression here. So, instead of starting with this, you can always have a, uh, a t naught here itself. Okay. No one can stop you from putting a t naught there and then you can proceed and you will get the same things. Okay, so, whichever way you prefer, you can do that. Okay, so, this constant, there is no operator here, these are some just complex numbers. So, I will call this C1 inverse. Okay, so, it is some complex number. I call it C1 inverse because I am going to eventually take it to this side. So, that will become C1 times cat omega. So, here I call it C 1 inverse. This thing, this factor is C 1 inverse. And then you have this piece. Okay. So, this is C 1 inverse and let me write here times this factor Now, I will insert a factor here. I, I do not think I did that the time we were discussing this. So, let me do it now. So, I will insert a factor e to the i h naught t naught plus lambda 1 minus i epsilon get 0. And this I can do because this factor when acts on the free vacuum the Hamiltonian h naught has an eigenvalue 0, right. So, this will become e to the 0 and e to the 0 is 1. So, that is why I am allowed to do this. Okay, So, there is no problem in inserting this um, operator here. Okay, and if I do this, I can write it as C1 inverse and let us see what these two operators form. 
this is forming the following it is s u inverse t not epsilon okay let's check so you have i h not times something here and minus i h let's recall what u was u is e to the i h naught t minus t naught times e to the minus i h t minus t naught. I think I should write it down on the next sheet uh, on the present sheet. Um, so, you see when you take uh, take the inverse of it, the orders will get interchanged and i will become minus i. Note that I am not taking a dagger anymore because instead of working with real t's and uh, see earlier h uh, h was Hermitian and T's were real, T and T not so real and then taking dagger and in inverse they were same thing, these were unitary. But now because I am taking time to be complex, it is take, it is, uh, we are taking lambda 1 minus i epsilon, okay. So, I have to be careful, dagger does not give you inverse, okay, because just because e to the i z, if you were to take a dagger of it, you will get e to the minus i z star. Right, I am right now just thinking z of as a z not as an operator but a complex number, okay. And this times this will not be one, okay. This times this is one when z is real, but this times so the dagger is not the inverse, and what you should do is take inverse, which will just be e to the minus i z, okay. So that is what um, we have to take care of. So, when you take inverse, the orders will change and the signs will change, okay, and that is what we have there. Okay, so you see the signs have changed and the order has changed. Maybe I should um, write down somewhere here u of t naught t is e to the i h naught t minus t naught e to the minus i h t minus t naught ok. And with that we see what do we see yeah that this will be the inverse of this. Okay, and then of course your ground state or the free ground state. So that we have, and with this I can write the following. That u inverse t naught minus lambda 1 minus i epsilon acting on free vacuum is this constant c 1 times ket omega. Okay, so, that is one relation we have found okay, and that is useful because u is completely expressed in terms of phi i's. Okay, we have already seen that we can do that. So, our goal of expressing omega in terms of free vacuum and phi i's is achieved here and we were interested in phi i's because phi i's are the things which evolve according to free theory, right. So, that is why this is what we wanted to do and similarly we can look at the bra version of the vacuum and get the following. Let me show that part also explicitly. So, what I want to do is, so you take the vacuum in the bra form and again write it in the basis of eigenstates of the full Hamiltonian. Not n prime. Okay, and now 
um, you act with this operator and when you do so on both the sides you get the following. Okay, same logic as before. So, when this operator is acting on um, on uh, cat omega, okay, bra omega, uh, the Hamiltonian here will get the eigenvalue e omega. Remember, H is Hermitian, so it acts on the bra and gets the same eigenvalue as H acting on the cat. So, this will give you e omega minus e omega that gives you 1, e to the 0 is 1. So, that is why all the factors have disappeared and you are left with only this piece. Okay. And these ones will give you factors which will vanish when you take lambda to infinity. Okay. So, exactly the same argument as before, keep epsilon to be fixed, take lambda to infinity, you will see you get an exponential suppression. So, here you can see uh, minus minus plus okay so minus something is not looking not looking good let me check No, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I, I was thinking wrongly. So, uh, for any other state, higher state, this h minus e omega will give you a positive number, right? Because the state will have higher energy than e omega, so that will be positive number. And then you have minus i times minus i, okay? That that becomes a minus one, so minus epsilon lambda times a positive number. And when you take uh, lambda to infinity, that will give you uh, exponential suppression. So, all is good. Now, what I will do is as before, I will insert a factor here which will contain h naught. So, what I do is I write the above equation as follows. So, this is what I insert here, and because this h naught has an eigenvalue 0 on this bra. Uh, 0, this exponential gives you really 1 when it acts on the vacuum. So, this is allowed and I should keep my this factor, this one. So, this is a complex number here and then you have bra omega. Okay. And um, you can check that what you have on the left hand side is the following. So, it is again u operator where time runs from t naught to lambda 1 minus epsilon. Okay, if you look at the definition of u that we have, this is what you will get. Okay, and then of course, this piece, no, uh, not this piece, but a piece coming from e omega. So, I can write it down. Okay, so that is almost the same as before and with this I can finally write an equivalent expression to this one, the equivalent of this guy okay, which relates omega to free vacuum and the expression is this. So, we have cat oh, sorry bra 0 u of lambda 1 minus i epsilon t naught. Okay and this is equal to some constant c 2 times omega and where c 2 is following. Okay. So, this is good.
So let me quickly summarize where we stand right now. Um, maybe here. Okay. So I have phi t x as phi i t x and you have u of t 0 t and u inverse t 0 t ok. Now, I am not writing dagger, but writing inverse because of the reason I explained a little back little time back ok and we have also shown that this operator u t 0 t we can express as time ordered exponential. So, we have seen that this is minus i t naught to t d tau h i tau ok and then we have further shown just now that u inverse give some space u inverse lambda 1 minus i epsilon ok minus lambda 1 minus i epsilon this is minus 2 t naught this operator is acting ok. So, this operator acting on ket 0 is c 1 ket omega and the same thing for bra vector is the following. Okay, so this is what we have found till now. Okay, so now we are almost there, a little bit of work is left, and we can then have a nice expression at the end. So, we said earlier that all that you can ask in quantum field theory can be expressed in, uh, in the following terms. So, you can look at these quantities okay, and that they will answer your most general questions that you can ask if you have knowledge of all these objects. Okay. But now in this course which is anyway about to finish soon, we will be only interested in um, quantities that appear when you are studying scatterings. Okay. So, when you study sc scattering you start from some initial state and look at what is the amplitude that it will it will evolve into some final state. And when you are looking at those uh, objects, okay, you do not require to know uh, all this entire set of um, inner products that you can construct, rather you require a much more restricted set and they are of this form. Okay. So, you require these and what is this? This time ordering operator just takes this entire product of, of fields here and orders it according to time keeping the earliest time to the rightmost and as you go from right to left the time increases. Okay. So, that is what uh, this time ordering operator is. Now, what I will do is I will look at um, um, look at this object. Okay, so for us, this is the object that we want to calculate in the interacting theory. Okay. So, now let us look at this. So, I, I start with this one. Uh, 
Okay, so I look at um, time order product of n number of fields, which are having their space time arguments as x i one, x i two, and so forth. Okay, and suppose that um, uh, the, the the times of these space time points are uh, are having this relation. So suppose if you choose x one not so out of these x i one, x i two, and so forth, someone will have the maximum time, largest time argument, and that one I am calling the one that guy is called as x one, and the time component is x one zero for that one. Okay, so that's the largest one, and then one of them is x two, and time corresponding to that is the second largest and so forth. Okay, so we have picked up, we have picked out, uh, I mean we have found out which one, which um, time arguments are largest and which and how they are ordered. Okay. So now if this is the case, then the above expression I can write with this knowledge as following. Right, so now these are in the right order. So this is the time ordered. So this and this are same because I have taken care of time ordering now. Okay. Now what I do is I um, use these results which I have here. Okay. And for omega in the bra form and omega in the cat form, I will use this. And for the phi's, I will use this. Okay, so I what do I get? So this guy is equal to. So it will have a C one inverse, C two inverse. That those constants will be multiplied here, and then you have free vacuum. This this piece, then you have U of lambda one minus i epsilon, comma t naught. So that's one operator you have here, and then u of x one I will write in this form. Sorry, phi of x one I will write using this expression. And what is that? It has a factor of u inverse. So u inverse x one. So x one means I will use x one naught. So here t will be replaced by x one naught, and the reference time t naught. Okay, and then you have phi i at x one. Okay, then you have u x one naught t naught. Okay, let's continue further. So for phi x two, I will again make this replacement. So I will have u inverse x two naught t naught phi i. x two, and then you'll have again a factor of u here. I'm not writing, and then you go further, and then you will have at the end phi i x n. There will be a factor of u here, which I'm, or rather u inverse here, which I'm not writing right now, but I will write the one on the right, and this will be u x n zero. T zero, and then this last piece, the the cat omega. Okay, this will give you u inverse t zero minus lambda one minus epsilon cat zero. Okay, so that's what we are going to get. Now you see that this uh, combination is going to appear frequently. U u inverse. This one. Here again, u u inverse. There, u u inverse, and in between also all these places will have phi's and then u inverse u inverse in between. Okay, and also note that when you have u u u inverse, the first argument is always t not here. The first argument of both u and u inverse is t not, and same. Okay, this one is opposite, so we'll worry about it. 
Okay, good then. So, what I will do is I will define an object V t prime t to be exactly what we are getting there. So, we are getting u inverse some t prime and the first argument is t naught and then we had a factor of u with again the first argument as t naught and the second argument was something else. So, let us call it t. So, that is the definition of v. Okay, and if you check substituting what u inverse is and what u is, you will get the following. Okay, that is one line algebra that you can do. Okay, so, check this. Then also check that if you were to take a derivative of v with respect to t, you are going to get h i t v of t t prime. Okay. So, that you can do. You already know how things act on u. So, this will work out. And of course, uh, from the definition here itself, it is clear that if you take v t prime t prime, that is 1, okay? because if t prime is same as t, this is 0, this is 0, this is, so there is something something wrong, this is t naught. Okay? So, um, sorry, so what I was saying was not correct. So, if you put t equal to t prime, this will go away, it will be 0. So, it, this will become 1, this factor and then you see that these two will just kill each, kill each other, these two exponential and then you get v t prime, t prime as 1. Okay. So, that will be your, that will serve as your boundary condition and you already know how to solve this equation, right. This is the one we solved earlier where v was written as u earlier. So, it will be the same solution because the differential equation is same, the boundary condition is same. So, you get the same result. So, you are going to get the following. Okay. So, now what I can do is I can take this result and substitute in the previous expression. See, these are all v's now. Okay. Maybe it will help if I write down that expression here. So, what we had was the following. So, if you look at omega t phi x i 1 phi x i n. Okay. This we wrote as um, c 2 inverse c 1 inverse okay. and you can check that this will turn out to be v of lambda 1 minus epsilon x 1 0 then you have okay this is getting difficult so let me write again this is equal to c2 inverse c1 inverse epsilon x10 okay then you have phi i x1 then you have v of x 1 0, x 2 0, then you have phi i of x 2 okay? and you go like this and then you have phi i of x n and then v of x n 0 minus lambda 1 minus i epsilon. Okay? So, please verify that this is what you get. So, we have uh, combined all the u's and u inverses into these v's. Okay? And also, we have already made this um, clear that x 1 has the largest time argument, x 2 has the largest, second largest 
and so forth and x n has the smallest time argument okay so this is is equal is, is equal to this one now you see that all the operators that appear within this expression okay all the all these operators phi i's and the operators that are present in v they all are in time order let me try to explain that so here you see the v the definition of v or the the result for v that we had obtained here h i's are operators made out of phi's or in more general phi's and pi's but for us it was phi 4 okay and there is a time ordering here so you remember what what was meant by exponential of this it was so you have um, when you are looking at nth order term in the exponential uh, in the expansion of the exponential it will have n pieces n factors of h okay and you will be integrating over those n h's but then they are all time order because of this time operator okay so when you look at v of t prime t the h i factors that appear in that they all are correctly ordered from lower time to the higher time going from right to left okay so v t prime t everything is ordered in time uh, in the correct manner okay they are, i mean by correct i mean they are ordered all the fields are ordered in time with the field at the smallest time appearing to the rightmost and field with highest time argument appearing to the leftmost okay so that is one thing we remember now we come to this expression so let's see this one this v runs from you can you see that this is the lowest time this is really minus infinity plus some um, imaginary part but this is minus infinity and from there you go to some x n 0 okay and that x n 0 is determined by what uh, field arguments you have chosen here okay so one of them is x n 0 which is the least one so you have here minus infinity to x n 0 so all the fields that appear in this factor of v they will be arranged like this so you will have h i at minus lambda 1 minus i epsilon okay so forth and then h i of x n 0 okay so this is how they will be ordered within this v and this is what we argued here okay then here you have a field which is at x n 0 so that is fine it is correctly ordered so you when you go from here to there you are still going towards higher time you continue like this and uh, the order is never broken the time order is never broken as you can see here when you reach here for example the x2 so this field is at time x2 naught and then all the fields that appear in here all the hi pieces hi factors they are ordered from uh, in the right time order starting with x2 naught and going towards higher time x1 naught right and then you again have x1 naught so this is also in right time order and then from x1 naught to infinity plus infinity so you see everything is correctly ordered in time within this uh, expression so what i can do is i can instead of having just t's here okay i can just use one time ordering operator okay and write this okay phi i now i will write x1 sorry x i1 0 okay because now it doesn't matter right once i put t outside what does it say it says put everything inside in the right time order so now i don't have to worry whether this is really the one which is of uh, having the highest time argument because even if it is not this operator will reshuffle the fields which appear in here 
and bring f uh, phi i x1 here okay so i can in fact i should write it even more neatly i should write it as phi i x i 1 phi i x i 2 phi i x i x i n and then we have all these v's which i should keep so lambda 1 minus i epsilon x 1 0 then we have v of x 1 0 x 2 0 okay and so forth maybe i can write one more x 3 0 x 2 0 and then you reach x n 0 minus lambda 1 minus epsilon okay i hope uh, this is not difficult maybe let me try to say again in case it is not clear so if you agree with me that in this expression all the fields whether they are in v or whether they are explicitly written as phi i's they all appear in correct time order right that's what we argued now when i come here all i am saying is no matter which way you write the v's and phi i's in what order this time ordering operator outside will put everything in the right order right it will uh, start from the lowest uh, field at the lowest values or lowest time values and go towards field at the highest time values so the moment t acts on this it gives you this expression okay so that's why i can just write it in this way okay if you agree with this then we are in very good shape because then i can do something i can look at uh, such products this one and the next two v's and and so forth and um, let's see did i make a mistake no i didn't okay so i'm going to utilize some property of v which is easy to check oops what happened okay i know what happened i will have more sheets okay so here is a um, another exercise that you can check so show that if you have v of t2 t3 and v of t2 t1 okay so this argument the second argument of this factor of this v and the first argument of this v if they are same then you get v of t1 t3 okay so this will not be difficult to check and if you use that then here what will happen this x1 not argument will disappear right so let's read this so what it does is this argument disappears these t2 and you get one v with this argument first argument and this argument as a second argument okay i'm sorry sometimes i'm saying this is the first argument that's the second argument uh, but uh, you see um, you understand what i'm saying so what do we get these two v's will combine to give v of lambda 1 minus epsilon x 2 0 okay but then you have so this becomes one v whose this the rightmost argument will be x 1 0 but then you have another v here whose first argument is x 2 naught so that can combine with these two and then the together they together will give you these three will together give you v of lambda 1 minus i epsilon x1 not x not 
one not they they disappear x two not disappear and you get x three not. Okay, so if you just run this this thing in the chain, you will end up with eventually one v because all the v's are going to combine with uh, so you get one v where the leftmost argument will be lambda one minus psi epsilon and the rightmost argument will be minus lambda one minus psi epsilon. Okay, so that also you can check. Maybe I can write it as an exercise. So you have v of lambda one minus i epsilon x one zero. Then you have v of x one zero x two zero, and then you have v of x two zero x three zero. And so forth, and you have eventually x n zero minus lambda one minus i epsilon, and show that using this above result that this is just yeah that's kind of obvious, but you can always check. Now we can substitute this result in the Previous one. Okay. So what do you get? You get. In fact, I can jump one more step. So now I will use this result. See what is v? T t prime. That's just uh, t prime and t appear here. So t prime is the lower limit, and the t is the upper limit, and You have this time ordered exponential, okay? So I can take this and use it for this entire uh, chain of products and substitute in this result, okay? So what do I get eventually? I get the following: omega. Now um, there is no gain in writing x i one x i two. See here. Now, whatever arguments are appearing here, it's the same arguments appearing here. So I can just stop worrying about those and just write x one phi of x two phi of x n. Okay, and what this is equal to free vacuum. One big time ordering operator. It's not big. It's just the bracket is big. <laughs> And phi x one, phi x two, phi x n. And then we had our exponential factor. Um, what was that? Exponential of minus i minus lambda one minus i epsilon. To lambda one minus i epsilon d tau h i of tau. Okay. 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 That's a nice result, except for the fact that I have forgotten c one inverse, c two inverse, and also another thing. This should be i. Now everything looks okay. Let me check. Okay, it does look okay. Okay, very good. So this is very nice because all these correlators, okay, these are called. By the way, I forgot to tell you the name. So these are called uh, correlators or Green's functions. Okay. So these objects are called. Green functions, and if you have n number of fields, you call n point green function or n point uh, n point correlator. So this is the name given to this object, and that uh, object in interacting theory I have expressed completely in terms of quantities that. Uh, That exist in free theory. Okay, the phi i is evolved with free Hamiltonian. The vacuum is of that of free uh, free theory. H i is also are made out of operators which are 
uh, phi i's or in our specific case it's phi i to the 4 okay so this is nice except for this c1 inverse and c2 inverse everything is good so what i can do is i can just construct another quantity which with which i can get rid of the c1 inverse c2 inverse so what i'll do is i'll look at this object which is just c1 inverse c2 inverse and you can check i think it's um, i can i can write it this is just u of lambda 1 minus epsilon t naught and then you have u inverse t naught minus lambda 1 minus epsilon okay and this we have just now seen that these combine nicely into one v this is v sorry that was u okay and you can check that this will um, c2 inverse this will combine into as we have shown above it will combine into 1 v okay and then this is again simply c2 inverse this exponential there should be a time ordering here i can just pull out the time ordering okay just like in this case and you have minus i again minus lambda 1 minus i epsilon to lambda 1 minus i epsilon d tau h i tau okay and then you have i'm sorry this is not becoming so, okay so this is what you get now this is uh, with the help of this if i divide this uh, this green function with this inner product the c1 inverse c2 inverse will cancel and we will have nothing unknown here okay so let me write down this final result that we have got uh, nicely on this one page and this will be our uh, master formula to work with in the case of interacting theory okay so let me write it i'll call it master formula Mm, yeah. So here we have So that's our master formula and now we are in business. Okay, because we can now calculate things 
because we know how to calculate things in free theory. And here I have expressed everything in terms of quantities uh, which exist in free theory. Okay, so we'll begin from here and start doing looking at some calculations that we can do in FIFO theory. Okay, so see you in the next video.